It's January 2020. The world is abuzz with international exchange. Organizations partnering with other organizations all across the globe. Students traveling to study abroad in new countries. Individuals looking to volunteer for causes they care about. Language teachers sharing their skills in new communities. We've all become accustomed to travel and there's a desire for more and more of it. We all hum along, taking our mobility for granted. And then a virus appears that starts to raise questions. More and more people are wearing masks. Certain countries begin to implement restrictions on movement. There's viral videos for how to wash your hands. And still the world keeps humming. Travelers depart, exchange happens. Until one week in March, the world suddenly shuts down. There's a scramble to find a flight home, and then there's virtually no exchange. Not with people on the other side of the globe, and not even with people on the other side of town. As the two weeks turned into a month, and the month turned into two, all of the global exchange organizations across the globe, whose mission it is to share language, knowledge, and increase intercultural understanding, were left wondering what their mission is when physical travel across borders was no longer possible, and for an unknown amount of time. Four of those organizations were pondering what they would do when they decided to do a little exchange of their own. Despite closed borders, people, places, things, Suida Mundo, Changes, and Carpe Mundi came together with the support of the State Department and started a conference to answer the questions, what does intercultural exchange look like during a global pandemic? How can we continue this work that's now more important than ever? And how can organizations connect with each other during this time to learn new techniques and form new partnerships? The final part of the conference was producing a report. What are the long-term impacts of the pandemic on global exchange? And what is this unique industry doing to keep the world humming, even while folks stay at home? Here's what we learned about major impacts to 30 global exchange organizations, some of which may be surprising. Some organizations responded to a survey, some we spoke to directly over Zoom. Let's take a trip around the globe to learn more about the responses of various organizations, starting with Latin America. Ciudad Mundo explored hybrid language exchange programming with People, Places, Things while waiting for the ability to send youth outbound and was able to begin several new program offerings. Change has become a regional leader in language learning, technology, and teacher training. A partnership with International TEFL Academy has expanded teaching capacity.
CSDS has embraced the necessity to focus on domestic development projects, as well as incorporating some virtual elements to their programming. The complete closure of the Vietnamese border will delay any kind of in-person exchange programming for some time. An increase in funding and volunteers has brought rapid organizational growth, and NEST leaders are working to expand globally, improve the quality of online instruction, and are also eager to resume in-person work. Carpe Mundi used this time to focus on behind-the-scenes operations including program evaluation and documentation and partnership development. This time enabled new collaboration with Where There Be Dragons. PPT went from a hyper-local focus working with immigrants and refugees to running their program completely online. They are shifting from being a language skills company to a hybrid cultural exchange provider. IPSL remains committed to outbound exchange and is continuing to send people abroad where possible. But programming has become more flexible with distance options becoming a viable part of the programming spectrum. Where There Be Dragons is expanding their outbound offerings to more low-income students of color in partnership with Carpe Mundi. After a year and a half of the pandemic, organizations are looking towards the future. Here's what they learned from the past year and what changes they're hoping will stick. What have organizations learned that they wouldn't have without the pandemic? What changes are here to stay and what changes are only temporary for the pandemic? What do organizations overall want the future to look like? So what's next for Global Exchange? Here's what organizations say they need in order to make their vision a reality moving forward.